friends this video on physical world part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exams please make sure that you have gone through physical world part 1 before you go ahead with this part the next will talk about is scope of physics well friends what do you think what is the scope of physics or how, how broad is physics to study well, broadly, there are three domains of interest in physics. They are the macroscopic domain, the mesoscopic domain, and the microscopic domain. Now, we'll discuss each of these domains one by one. So, let us look at the macroscopic domain. So, what do you think the macroscopic domain would be? As the name suggests macro what does the word macro means macro means big something which is big in size scopic something whose scope is big that is macroscopic very simple right so the macroscopic domain includes phenomena at the terrestrial and astronomical scales when i say terrestrial and astronomical in terrestrial, I talk about things which, see, which we see around us. For example, human beings, animals, trees, buildings and anything. Almost everything that is visible to us, which we can see with our naked eye around us, they, are all, they all fall under the terrestrial scale. Similarly, when I talk of astronomical scales, I talk of all the celestial bodies. For example, the planets, stars, etc. In the macroscopic domain, if you see, we are dealing with things which are very big in size. Correct? So next, let us see the microscopic domain. Very similar to macroscopic, the term micro means something which is very small in size. So this microscopic domain includes molecular, atomic and nuclear phenomena. So, do you think you can see a molecule with your naked eye? Of course not. So, anything which we see around us is at the end made up of molecules, which in turn is again made up of atoms and the atoms in turn consists of the nucleus. So, just imagine how small things this microscopic domain deals with. So, now let us see the third one that is the mesoscopic. Meso, the name suggests it is something in between macro and micro. Something in between these two. So something in middle of micro and macro. That means something which is neither too big nor too small. So the mesoscopic domain deals with a few hundreds or tens of atoms. That means it deals with several groups of atoms. Well, these days, this mesoscopic domain is emerging as an exciting field of research. You can see many people doing a lot of research on this domain. Now, so we learned about the three domains. What are the three domains we learned? Macro, micro and meso. Now, let us have a quick comparison so that you can just relate it very quickly. What I told was anything which we see around us, that is macroscopic domain. Now, friends, anything which we see around us is made up of matter. Correct? This matter, in turn, is made up of molecules. Molecules, in turn, is made up of atoms. And atoms, in turn, consists of nucleus. So, anything which we see around us, they are all matter. So, this is the macroscopic domain. Now the molecules, atoms, nucleus, they all fall under the microscopic domain. And something in between these two, that means somewhere here, that is nothing but the mesoscopic domain. So I hope it is very clear to you now. Macro, meso and then micro. Okay, so now let's see 
what makes physics an exciting subject? I mean, why do a person want to study physics for years together? Well, the first thing is carrying out interesting experiments in lab. That is absolutely interesting. You are going to learn something new every day. And that too with whatever you yourself are doing. So that's absolutely interesting. The next is discovering secrets of nature. As I told you, the rainbow which is formed is since childhood we are seeing a rainbow on the sky. But we don't know what makes a rainbow. But later in life, when you study and you come to know, okay, this is the reason which makes the rainbow formed, it is very joyful. So, to discover secrets of nature, to know about things which you already knew since childhood, that also turns out to be very interesting. Third, applying laws of physics for practical purposes. For example, there are several concepts in physics like I'll give you a small example like we study a phenomenon called electromagnetic induction again you don't worry we'll discuss it in the concerned chapter just to give this example I'm quoting this name we have a phenomenon called electromagnetic induction now what using this principle we generate the devices which we see around us like electric motors electric generators they are all based on these principles of electromagnetic induction so if we see there are several laws in physics which are finally used for practical purposes in some or the other way the next we'll discuss is physics technology and society how are they interrelated you know at certain times what happens is Technology comes first and then it gives rise to a new physics. When I say new physics, I mean to say it gives rise to like if we talk of physics, we have several branches of study even inside physics. So sometimes it happens that a technology comes and then it gives rise to a completely new branch of physics. I'll quote you an example here. For example, the heat engine. This heat engine was discovered somewhere around 1700 approximately. Now, after this heat engine was discovered, the scientists studied the principles and the reasons which make the heat engine work. And finally, they discovered a complete discipline of thermodynamics, which is a very important and a very significant part of physics these days. So if we see that it was because of the heat engine that thermodynamics came into picture. Similarly, at some other times, physics comes first and then it gives rise to new technology. For example, the silicon chip or the integrated circuit. How did it come? It came, it was basically nothing but combination of resistors, transistors and other components. These resistors and transistors are nothing but they are direct product of physics and from these chips and ICs the entire computer revolution took place. So the computer revolution which we see these days is nothing but technology but this technology came from core physics that is from the semiconductor physics. So the theory of semiconductor physics gave rise to the computer revolution. So we can say that physics and technology, both of them can give rise to each other. Sometimes physics comes first and gives rise to technology. At other times, technology comes first and gives rise to physics. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.